which are here. So she always wrote about things she knew and domestic situations. And also there's a gramophone, a, a, a modern electric gramophone, but it keeps breaking down, as all gramophones do. So you'll kind of uh, hear a chug, 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 chug as you go through. Beyond the lily pool, the ground sunk again. And in that dip of the ground, bushes and brambles had mobbed themselves together. It was always shady, sun flecked in summer, dark and damp in winter. In the summer there were always butterflies darting through, red admirals feasting and floating. It was the very place for a dressing room, just as obviously the terrace was the very place for a play. The very place, Miss Latrobe had exclaimed the first time she came to call and was shown the grounds. That's the place for a pageant, Mr Oliver, she had exclaimed. There's the stage, here the audience, and down there among the bushes a perfect dressing room for the actors. She was always agog to get things up. But where did this woman spring from? With that name, she presumably wasn't pure English. From the Channel Islands, perhaps? Rumour had said that she kept a tea shop at Winchester. That had failed. She had been an actress. That had failed. She had bought a four-roomed cottage and shared it with an actress they had quarrelled. Very little was actually known about her. Outwardly she was swarthy, sturdy and thick-set and strode about the fields in a smock frock, sometimes with a cigarette in her mouth, often with a whip in her hand and used rather strong language. Perhaps then she wasn't altogether a lady. At any rate, she had a passion for getting things up. The heat had increased. The clouds had vanished. All was sun now. The view laid bare by the sun was flattened, silence, still. The cows were motionless. The brick wall, no longer sheltering, beat back grains of heat. Rows of chairs Deck chairs, gilt chairs, hired cane chairs and indigenous garden seats had been drawn up on the terrace. There were plenty of seats for everybody, but some preferred to sit on the ground. Certainly Miss Latrobe had spoken the truth when she had said, The very place for a pageant. The lawn was as flat as the floor of a theatre, the terrace rising made a natural stage. The trees barred the stage like pillars, and the human figure was seen to great advantage against a background of sky. As for the weather, it was turning out against all expectations a very fine day, a perfect summer afternoon. What luck, Mrs Carter was saying, last year, then, the play began. Was it or was it not the play? Choo, 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 sounded from the bushes. It was the noise a machine makes when something has gone wrong. Some sat down hastily, others stopped talking guiltily, all looked at the bushes. For the stage was empty. Choo, 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 the machine buzzed in the bushes. While they looked apprehensively, and some finished their sentences, a small girl, like a rosebud in pink, advanced, took her stand on a mat behind a conch, hung with leaves, and piped <coughs> out, Gentle and simples, I address you all. So was it the play then, or a prologue? Come hither for our festival. Ah. This is a pageant, all may see, 
drawn from our island history. England am I? She's England, they whispered. It's begun. The prologue, they added, looking down at the programme. England am I? She piped again and stopped. She'd forgotten her lines. <laughs> Here, here, said an old man in a white <coughs> waistcoat, briskly. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> Blast em, cursed Miss Latrobe, hidden behind the tree. Music, she signalled. Music. But the machine continued. Choo, 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 choo. <laughs> a child newborn, she prompted. A child newborn, Phyllis Jones continued. Sprung from the sea whose billows, blown by a mighty storm, cut off from France and Germany this isle. She glanced back over her shoulder. Chop, 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 the machine buzzed. A long line of villagers in shirts made of sacking began passing in and out in single file behind her, between the trees. They were singing, but not a word reached the audience. England am I, now weak and small, a child, all may see. Her words peppered the audience as with a shower of hard little stones. Chuff, 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 went the machine like a corn cutter on a hot day. The villagers were singing, but their words were blown away. Chuff, 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 the machine ticked. Then, at last, the machine ground out a tune. The pompous popular tune frayed and bled. Miss Latrobe watched from behind the tree. Muscles loosened, ice cracked. The stout lady in the middle began to beat time with her hand on the chair. Oh. Mrs. Manresa was humming. In olden days, the glimpse of a stocking was thought of as something shocking. Now heaven knows anything goes. Good authors, too, who once knew better words, now only use for letter words, writing prose. Anything goes. She was afloat on the stream of the melody, radiating royalty, complacency, good humour. The wild child was queen of the festival. The play had begun. <laughs> Very good. Yeah.